Lent Week 3 Sunday A reading from the homilies of St Augustine on St John's Gospel There came a woman of Samaria to draw water There came a woman she symbolizes the church which was not yet justified but was about to be justified for this is the effect of the conversation she comes in ignorance she finds him and he converses with her we must see what this woman of samaria was and why she had come to draw water the samaritans did not belong to the jewish nation but were foreigners it is part of the symbolism that this woman who is a type of the church came from a foreign nation because the church was to come from the gentiles and so be of a great race from the jews we must listen to ourselves speaking in her we must recognize ourselves in her person and in her person we must thank god for ourselves she was not the reality but its symbol and because she provided a symbol she became the reality too for she came to believe in jesus who was putting her before us as a symbol she came to draw some water quite simply she had come to draw water as any other man or woman is accustomed to do jesus said to her give me a drink for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food the samaritan woman said to him how is it that you a jew ask a drink of me a woman of samaria for jews have no dealings with samaritans you see that they were foreigners indeed the jews would not use their vessels as the woman brought her own bucket to draw some water she was surprised that a jew was quite uncharacteristically requesting a drink from her although jesus asked for a drink his real thirst was for this woman's faith finally we hear who it is who requests a drink jesus answered her if you knew the gift of god and who it is that is saying to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water he asks her for a drink and promises to give her a drink he is in need as one who will accept who abounds as one who will satisfy if you knew he said the gift of god god's gift is the holy spirit but he still speaks to her in veiled language and gradually he enters into her heart perhaps he is already teaching her for what appeal could be more delightful or more kindly made if you knew the gift of god and who it is that is saying to you give me a drink perhaps it is you who would have asked him and he would have given you living water the water which he was about to give her is surely the water referred to in the words with you is the fountain of life it is impossible for those who shall be drunk from the abundance of your house to be thirsty ever again jesus was promising her plentiful nourishment and the abundant fullness of the holy spirit as yet the woman did not understand how did she answer in her lack of understanding the woman said to him sir 
give me this water that i may not thirst nor come here to draw need draw her to this labor while her frailty recoiled from it how wonderful if she heard the invitation come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest that was what jesus words to her meant an end to her labor but she did not yet understand their meaning lent week 3 monday a reading from the homilies of saint basil the great let him who boasts boast of the lord let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let not the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches but what constitutes true boasting and wherein is a man great let him who glories glory in this it is written that he understands and knows me that i am the lord herein lies the greatness of man his glory and his majesty truly to know what is great to cling to it and to seek glory from the lord of glory for the apostle says let him who boasts boasts of the lord in the passage where he writes god made christ our wisdom our righteousness and sanctification and redemption therefore as it is written let him who boasts boast of the lord a man glories fully and perfectly in god when he does not extol himself on account of his own righteousness but knows that he is lacking in true righteousness and that he is really justified by faith alone in Christ Paul boasts of the fact that he despises his own righteousness but seeks that righteousness by faith which comes through Christ which comes from God so that he may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death that if possible he may somehow attain the resurrection from the dead here all loftiness of pride has fallen nothing of which you might boast is left to you o man so let your boast and your hope be founded on him so that you mortify all that is yours and seek your future life in Christ since we have the first fruits of this we are already enjoying it living totally in the grace and free gift of god it is god who is at work with you both to will and to work for his good pleasure what is more through his spirit god reveals his wisdom which he predestined for our glorification god gives us strength and energy in our toils i worked harder than any of them says paul though it was not i but the grace of god which is with me god has freed us from dangers beyond all human hope we felt he says again that we had received the sentence of death but that was to make us rely not on ourselves but on god who raises the dead he delivered us from so deadly a peril and he delivers us now on him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again lent week 3 tuesday a reading from the sermons of saint peter chrysologus what prayer knocks for upon the door 
fasting successfully bakes and mercy receives there are three things brethren three through which faith stands firm devotion abides and virtue endures prayer fasting and mercy what prayer knocks for upon your door fasting successfully begs and mercy receives prayer fasting and mercy these three are a unit they give life to one another for fasting is the soul of prayer and mercy is the life of fasting let no one cut these three apart they are inseparable if a man has only one of them or if he does not have them all simultaneously he has nothing therefore he who prays should also fast and he who fasts should also be merciful he who wants to be heard when he petitions should hear another who petitions him he who does not close his own ear to a suppliant opens god's ear to himself the fasting man should realize what fasting is if anyone wants god to perceive that he is hungry he should himself take notice of the hungry if he hopes for mercy he should show mercy himself if he desires fatherly kindness he should display it first he who wishes someone to make an offering to him should make an offering himself he is an unworthy petitioner who demands for himself what he refuses to another have this as your own norm of showing mercy do you yourself show mercy to others in the same manner amount and readiness with which you desire it to be shown to yourself therefore let prayer mercy and fasting be one petition for us before god let them be one legal aid in our behalf let them be a threefold prayer for us therefore let us seek by fasting what we have lost by our contempt let us immolate our souls by fasting because we can offer nothing better to god the prophet proves this when he says a sacrifice to god is an afflicted spirit a contrite and humble heart god does not despise offer your soul to god offer the oblation of fasting do this to make your soul a pure victim a holy sacrifice a living victim which remains yours while it is given to god the man who fails to offer this gift to god will have no excuse for he who will give himself is unable to suffer want but to make those gifts acceptable follow them up with mercy fasting does not germinate unless watered by mercy when mercy dries up fasting suffers drought for mercy is to fasting what rain is to the earth the man who is fasting may prepare his heart cleanse his flesh weed out his vices and so virtues nevertheless if he does not sprinkle his plants with streams of mercy he does not gather his harvest o oh, you who fast when your mercy fasts your field fasts too o oh, you who fast what you have poured out in mercy comes back as storage in your barn 
consequently lest you lose by saving gather in by dispensing give to yourself by giving to the poor man for you yourself shall not possess what you would not leave to another lent week 3 wednesday a reading from the book of saint theophilus of antioch addressed to atholicus the vision of god if you say show me your god i reply show me the man that you are and i will show you my god you must show me that the eyes of your soul can see and that the ears of your heart can hear those who see with bodily eyes contemplate the affairs of life on earth and distinguish things that differ such as light from darkness white from black ugly from beautiful the excessive from the defective what is well proportioned and shapely from what is irregular and distorted so to the human ear distinguishes sounds that are shrill or deep or sweet in the same way the ears of the heart and the eyes of the soul are capable of perceiving god for god is seen by those who are capable of seeing him once they have the eyes of the soul opened all men have eyes but some have eyes which are hooded by cataracts and do not see the light of the sun but the light of the sun does not fail to shine just because the blind do not see the blind must blame themselves and their eyes so you also have cataracts over the eyes of your soul because of your sins and wicked deeds just as a man must keep a mirror polished so he must keep his soul pure when there is rust on a mirror a man's face cannot be seen in it so also when there is sin in a man such a man cannot see god but if you will you can be cured deliver yourself to the physician and he will cure the eyes of your soul and heart who is the physician he is god who heals and gives life through the word and wisdom god made everything through his word and wisdom for by his word the heavens were made firm and by his spirit all their power his wisdom is most powerful god by wisdom founded the earth he prepared the heavens by intelligence by knowledge the abysses were broken up and the clouds poured forth dew if you know these things and live in purity holiness and righteousness you can see god but before all faith and the fear of god must take the lead in your heart then you will understand these things when you put off what is mortal and put on imperishability then you will rightly see god for god raises up your flesh immortal with your soul after becoming immortal you will then see the immortal if you believe in him now lent week 3 thursday a reading from the treatise of tertullian on prayer the spiritual offering prayer is the spiritual offering which has abolished the ancient sacrifices what to me is the multitude of your sacrifices says the lord i have had enough of burnt offerings of rams i have no desire for the fat of lambs 
are the blood of bulls and of goats who looked for these from your hands we learn from the gospel what god has asked for the hour will come we are told when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth god is spirit and so this is the kind of worshiper he wants we are true worshipers and true priests praying in spirit we make our sacrifice of prayer in spirit an offering which is god's own and acceptable to him this is the offering which he has asked for and which he has provided for himself this is the sacrifice offered from the heart fed on faith prepared by truth unblemished in innocence pure in chastity garlanded with love which we must bring to god's altar in a procession of good works to the accompaniment of psalms and hymns it will obtain for us from god all that we ask what will god deny to a prayer which proceeds from spirit and truth seeing it is he who demands it how great are the proofs of its efficacy which we read and hear and believe the old prayer no doubt brought deliverance from fire wild beasts and hunger and yet it had not received its form from christ how much more fully efficacious than is christian prayer it does not station the angel of the dew in the midst of the fire nor block the mouths of lions nor transfer to the hungry the peasant's dinner it has no special grace to avert the experience of suffering but it arms with the endurance those who do suffer who grieve who are pained it makes grace multiply in power so that faith may know what it obtains from the lord while it understands what for god's name sake it is suffering in the past prayer induced plagues put to flight the hosts of the enemy brought on drought now however the prayer of righteousness turns aside the whole wrath of god he is concerned for enemies makes supplication for persecutors is it surprising that it knows how to squeeze out the waters of heaven seeing it did have power even to ask for fire and obtain it prayer alone it is that conquers god but it was christ's wish for it to work no evil he has conferred upon it all power concerning good and so its only knowledge is out to call back the souls of the deceased from the very highway of death to straighten the feeble to heal the sick to cleanse the devil possessed to open the bars of the prison to loose the bands of the innocent it also absolves sins drives back temptations quenches persecutions strengthens the weak hearted delights the high minded brings home wayfarers stills the waves confounds robbers feeds the poor rules the rich lifts up the fallen supports the unstable upholds them that stand the angels to pray all of them the whole creation prays cattle and wild beasts pray and bend their knees and in coming forth from their stalls and lairs look up to heaven their mouth not idle making the spirit move in their own fashion moreover the birds taking flight lift themselves up to heaven 
and instead of hands spread out the cross of their wings while saying something which may be supposed to be a prayer what more than of the obligation of prayer even the lord himself prayed to him be honor and power for ever and ever lent week 3 friday a reading from the commentary of pope saint gregory the great on the book of job the mystery of our being made alive blessed job a type of holy church sometimes speaks with the voice of her members sometimes with that of her head while he is speaking of the members he is suddenly raised to speak the words of the head so he adds i suffered these things although i was free from iniquity and my prayer to god was pure although christ was free from iniquity he suffered he committed no sin nor was guile found on his lips yet he underwent the pain of the cross for our redemption he alone offered pure prayers to god beyond all others for in the very torment of his passion he prayed for his persecutors father forgive them for they know not what they do what purer kind of prayer can be cited or imagined than that which consists of merciful intercession for those who are the cause of the pain one is suffering so it came about that our redeemer's persecutors eventually drank as believers the blood which they had spilled in their rage and proclaimed that he was the son of god job's next words speak aptly of this blood o earth cover not my blood and let my cry find no place to hide in you when man sinned he was told you are earth and to earth you shall return this earth however has not hidden the blood of our redeemer in that every sinner receiving the price of his redemption confesses and praises it and makes known its worth to all his neighbors the earth has not covered his blood because the church has now preached the mystery of our redemption in all parts of the world we must note the words added let my cry find no place to hide in you the blood of the redemption which we take is the cry of our redeemer for this reason paul mentions the sprinkled blood that speaks more graciously than the blood of abel now of abel's blood it had been said the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the earth the blood of jesus speaks more graciously than that of abel because abel's blood sought the death of the brother who killed him but the blood of the lord one life for his persecutors if the mystery of the lord's passion is to be effectual in us we must imitate what we receive and proclaim to others what we venerate his cry finds in us a place to hide if the tongue is silent of what the mind has come to believe but that his cry should not be hidden in us it remains that each one of us according to his measure should make known the mystery of his being made alive lent week 3 saturday a reading from the addresses of saint gregory nasianson let us serve christ in the poor mercy is high in the list of the beatitudes 
blessed are the merciful say scripture for they shall obtain in mercy blessed is he who considers the needy and the poor and again it is well with the man who deals generously and lends we read elsewhere the righteous man is ever giving liberally and lending let us lay hold of this blessing and yearn a name for understanding let us be kind even the night must not interrupt your works of pity do not say go away and come back i will give it to you tomorrow nothing must come between your intention and you are carrying out of your act of kindness kindness is the only thing which does not admit of delay share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house and do so with joy and alacrity he who does acts of mercy writes the apostle let him do so with cheerfulness then your good deed is doubled by your readiness on the other hand what is offered reluctantly and under constraint is unwelcome and unadorned good deeds must be cheerful not doleful if you get rid of oppression and unfair preference as it is written that is meanness and scrutinizing or ambiguity and grumbling what will happen what a great and wonderful thing this is what a great reward awaits the man who does this then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily now who is there who does not long for light and healing if you are willing to listen to me then servants of christ his brothers and co-heirs i say that we should visit christ while there is opportunity take care of him and feed him we should clothe christ and welcome him we should honor him not only at our table like some not only with ointments like mary not only with a sepulcher like joseph of arimathea nor with things which have to do with his burial like nicodemus who loved christ only by half nor finally with gold incense and myrrh like the magi who came before all those whom we have mentioned but as the lord of all desires mercy and not sacrifice and as compassion is better than tens of thousands of fat rams let us offer him this mercy through the needy and those who are at present cast down on the ground let us do this so that when we depart hence they may welcome us into the eternal habitations in the same christ our lord to whom be glory forever amen